The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Mr. Hugo Chavez Frias, President of the Bolivian Republic, Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. I request the Chief of Protocol to escort His Excellency. For the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Mr. Hugo Chavez Frias, President of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Excelentísimo señor. Your Excellency Kofi Hanan, Secretary General of the United Nations. Your Excellency Han Sen Song, President of the General Assembly of the United Nations, distinguished and honorable delegates, colleagues, heads of state and government, ladies and gentlemen. Just over a year ago, we were here at the Millennium Summit. when about 100 days were left for us to embark on this, the 21st century. At that time, we were starting, uh, beginning our speech on behalf of Venezuela and of the Bolivarian people of Venezuela, referring to the supreme example of Christ, Jesus Christ and his fight for justice, peace and life. Today, now that we are already in this century, although with unfortunately very painful steps into this new century, in such a short period of time, we have suffered the abominable terrorist attack of the 11th of September. And counter to the culture of peace, counter to the dialogue among civilizations declared by the United Nations, the year 2000 and 2001, when counter to the goodwill of the peoples of the world, Suddenly, the drums of war are sounding again. And now we say more than ever, more than in the past, with greater determination and passion than in the past, that our struggle for peace requires a priority attention and takes the first place. Venezuela, the people of Venezuela, the government, of Venezuela, its institutions have joined from the very beginning in the chorus of voices which first of all reject these abominable events. And in this meeting in New York, in this incredible city, in this North American nation, this is the opportunity for us to repeat our sympathy, our grief shared with the people and governments of the United States and with its institutions because of the sorrow of the events which occurred. And we say, as we have said, from the very first day of the tragedy which has submerged the world in mourning, we have said that the fight against terrorism should be transformed into the war against war, in other words, the achievement of peace. At that Millennium Summit, we also said, like Simon Bolivar, the liberator of South America, remembering his dream of the Chimborazo Summit, a supreme mandate 
Let us say the truth. Let us speak the truth to all men and women. And precisely on the basis of horrible and tragic truths that we are experiencing today in the world, let us call for a new world pact in the United Nations. And I quote textually from that speech, the speech that was made just over one year ago. I quote what we were saying. At this time in the life of the world, we continue to be human beings living together, but now the figures have uh, doubled, not because of a world war, because the main cause of this horrible truth of the situation affecting the people of the world is poverty, marginality, and hunger. So what is first and foremost in this dramatic, tragic moment is that we must remember and therefore, without any further delay, we must build a new world pact in the United Nations. We were saying one year ago, in the 21st century and for the third millennium, the United Nations and all of us should concentrate our greatest possible efforts on and financial order on the fight against the devils of hunger, extreme poverty and death which are afflicting the world. This is what we said a year ago in this marvelous, this beautiful setting. I think we are fulfilling the Bolivarian mandate of stating the truth. At that time also, Venezuela recognized the validity, the precision, the grandeur, and the truth to speak of truths that was launched as a challenge to the entire world by our Secretary General in the preparatory document, which subsequently became the Millennium Declaration. And our dear friend Kofi Annan reminded us of this today in his opening words for our discussions when he recalled that, for example, last year we committed ourselves to the goal by the year 2015 of reducing poverty by 50% and a marginality and when we we set very specific goals with figures to reduce by 50 percent the number of human beings who live with income less than one dollar per day at the millennium summit great truths were stated and we heard the appeals of our peoples and we stated then and as we continue to state today that all the girls and boys, all the children of our planet by the year 2015 must have access to education, to full education. And as he also reminded us that all human beings of the planet should have access to potable water. We're not talking about internet. We're talking about drinking water, basic water, water for life. Those goals, those truths that were stated last year and were discussed over a number of and repeated in hundreds of marvelous speeches. But then, but today, one year later, we have to continue asking ourselves, as we did last year in our statement, how are we going to achieve this? 
the successful strategies that can be used to, to achieve these lofty goals through justice. Justice is the only path to true peace. And we said that we had to come and discover and reveal truths here, to uncover them. And that here, because of honor and dignity, and that for the life of our peoples, we had to come to speak without any fear. When we are talking about the life of peoples, we cannot be afraid. And we said that we had to come here to speak without the two-folded morale that sometimes invades our discussions. We had to say, and we said then, and I quote, and here I see our brothers from India, and here I'm thinking of the Indian philosopher, Hido Krishnamurti, when speaking of truths as a basic dynamic element to understand the secrets of life. Truth, truth, truth. We want truth. If we do not recognize the real truth, then it will be extremely difficult for us to find the proper solutions to the horrendous tragedies we are faced with in this world. On behalf of the people of Venezuela, I come back here today to continue contributing ideas in this effort, this joint effort of all of us to reveal the true truths, real truths, and to speak with true words. For us, with the combination of reason and passion, they're not just cold words on paper, they come from the heart, and for them not to remain on the paper as as cold words, but for them to put the finger in the wound of tr the real truth, because truth today is an open wound, and it is our sublime ultimate challenge to close this and heal this wound. But with a great deal of optimism and faith in life, in uh, brotherhood, in union, in the possibility, the supreme possibility that we have today as leaders of the countries of our planet to try to identify and build together true solutions to the problems that exist to establish justice and peace. We in Venezuela feel that the world has to be reviewed completely. We have to use a huge, very powerful magnifying glass to look very closely at what is happening in the world because the world has been suffering, has been struggling along from mistake to mistake from at the end of the Second World War, there, then we had the birth of the United Nations to work in favor of peace, to avoid uh, the repeat of the horrors of the past, but we have not avoided new horrors. The Berlin Wall fell, was the Soviet Union fell at the end of the 20th century, and voices were raised saying history has come to an end reached the end of our path. We have reached the final war, the global village, the globalization of a new world order. This is the triumph of a model, the triumph of a philosophy because the other philosophy collapsed, derived. But that is a lie. Who can claim victory today in this world, which is a ref rent with of poverty and uh, pain and uh, death. What is the model that can claim victory? Venezuela, we are requesting with uh, passion and with ardor that we should be well interpreted and we say so with love, with faith and hope, invoking our Lord, uh, our God, invoking life and peace and respecting uh, our brothers and sisters. 
let us interpret these words uh, properly. We need to look thoroughly at ourselves. We need to review the political orders and that exist in the world in our countries. In America, we speak of democracy. Yes, democracy. But in Venezuela, we say, which type of democracy are they talking about? Let us give thanks. Over 40 years in Venezuela from 1958 to 1998, I ended up destroying a people of uh, taking away their sovereignty, of uh, imposing misery in a territory that is fertile with gold and uh, petroleum. That democracy has become a democracy and ended up being a tyranny and we don't want that type of democracy in the Venezuela and we are sure that we will never have that type of democracy again. The democracy has to be filled with popular content, with ethics, with justice. We also have said, we've been saying in Venezuela, we need to review our economic models. The models that were uh, established among our peoples at the past in Neo-capitalism, the path to hell, the path to hell. Let us go through the streets and cities of uh, Latin America and we'll see the results of uh, neoliberal policies. As uh, John Paul II was saying, we need to look at the economy, we need to review ethics, we need to review politics, we need to review and revise everything today. We have to do so if we want to be a viable place, if we want peace to reign on our planet. And is globalization the path to development? It could be if it is based on justice, equality, and respect in the relations among all. Everything needs to be revised, as Vivian Forrester was saying when speaking of economic horror, that world the world is in a process of change, and it has to be filled with optimism. The world is changing. The world is moving. There are new currents uh, taking place in filling the uh, spaces. And so let us go with these currents, but always searching justice. As Ignacio Ramones said, in the Monde Diplomatique, the alternative paths, alternative solutions are appearing throughout the world. Venezuela, quite humbly, we're making a contribution through a peaceful re revolution, democratic revolution, committed to the human being, committed to an international policy of peace, of friendship, of respect, of uh, pluripolarity. And here we come to ratify this. The voice of Venezuela condemns terrorism. The voice of Venezuela expresses its solidarity in the fight against terrorism not only the voice but also the actions of Venezuela but equally the voice of Venezuela is a reflection which shows us a mandate of the United Nations respect to international law respect for rights and any action against a crime has to be legitimate it has to be based on the respect of human rights and the respect of international law Nobody should interpret Venezuela's words as a condemnation of anything or anyone. It is a call for reflection, a call for us to base ourselves in the framework of international law and the mandate of the United Nations. Venezuela has also shouldered its responsibility on in various scenario in various fora and at international level in the organization of American states. We are in the process of proposing that the social charter be incorporated and apart from the democratic charter, social charter, which will give depth to the fight throughout the continent to place a human being in the front line. The organization of uh, oil exporting countries where we are holding the presidency of uh, the conference of the heads of states. We have proposed and achieved uh, a consensus among all for balance and dialogue between consumers and producers of oil, aware as we are of the need uh, to ensure supplies and to have a fair price for all of this, for this vital resource for the development of life. Venezuela in the G15, where 
today it occupies the presidency of promoting the north-south dialogue and the need to revitalize the north side dialogue but not a dialogue falling into fear as a but a dialogue of equals trying to find solutions a cooperation of south south uh, latin america and the caribbean with africa with asia and with all the peoples of the world venezuela in the group of 77 is of working for these same strategic lines of consensus, a dialogue, and encounter. We are very optimistic, as we should all be. But we say, despite everything, that we need to have tremendous political will, greater political will, to promote all of these changes and to give impetus to all these transformations. If we talk about the theory of war, then we'd have to put the cavalry at the front, the front line. The cavalry is a policy, politics, the ethics and the will of all of us and we need to give impetus to the movement. Finally, I think that apart from the pain and condemnation and fight against terrorism and against uh, the beasts who undertook this horrendous act, we think that the greatest honor goes to the innocent victims, uh, those who have fallen in these acts and many others throughout the world who have been victims, who we have cried for, for whom we feel sorrow, the innocent children, those men and women, all of those who have fallen. As I heard uh, Tony Blair, the Prime Minister of the UK, say a few days ago in Downing Street in a conversation that we had, Blair said to me after I meant, made a statement to him, and I thought it was marvelous then. If there is anything that we could extract from this crisis and this pain which is beneficial and of our advantage is that we should create a global alliance, as he said, to fight against the causes of violence around the planet. And the speakers who have spoken before me have indicated many of these causes, but the Emir of Qatar also said, and the president of the Islamic Conference, something which is a great truth, that none of this should just remain as words, empty words. We say in our lands that this is the time to move towards concrete action. We want to see a Palestinian state. We want to see that become a reality. That days and months should not continue passing by. Years should not pass by with us coming back here to repeat the same words. Let us move on to action, to reality. Let us see the major transformation of the Bretton Woods institutions. We want to see the transformation of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. We want to see that now. We want justice for the condemned of the world, as Franz Fanon said. But not tomorrow, right away. Tomorrow may be too late. And finally, we said at the meeting on the 7th of September last year, and taking the Bible as the as in Ecclesiastes it says everything that happens under the Sun has its time brothers and sisters of this planet our planet this planet and sorrow of our world let us do everything that we can do but the real truth for this difficult time in which we are living, for it to become the time of the people, the time for justice, the only path to real peace. Let me end by repeating what I said last year. Let us save the world. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela for the statement just made. May I request the representative to remain seated while Deputy Secretary General and I escort the President of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela.